All the income tax invest about investing, finance, and professional development for today's terms only. The investment talk today would be Tim Tiki Teach. First, want to say happy Monday, everyone. Have a great weekend, by the way. Respect to recording time of 7:33 a.m. on Eastern Time. Your term country trading three thousand sixty-eight dollars, down about three point seven eight percent so far. Respect to both crypto and the equity market, it's experienced a relatively sizable sell-off today. Seems like the red September. Um, is slowly cultivating in front of our eyes so far. In respect to directly towards Ethereum, in terms of the media affectation front, there isn't anything specific, um, you know, that's microly driving, uh, driving um, Ethereum to sell off from there. It's mainly coming from a collections of macro factors that's driving the sell off, right? And I've identified five so far specifically. And in the chronological order, the first one coming from Christine Lagarde, basically the European Central Bank's president, with her depictions during this weekend talking about uh, crypto assets, and then she, has, I think she has named like ten specific um, uh, crypto assets, calling it some sort of a suspicious warning with the recent, you know, astronomical activity that we've seen in the price levels, right? Especially on the altcoin front, right? There are some selected uh, altcoin that surged about 5,000% recently. So obviously with that um, has raised some flags with respect to the central bank from Europe. Um, so that's one news, talk about, you know, calling a suspicious warning, knowing the fact she's a public figure um, with some influential power can definitely drive some negative pressure onto, you know, subsequently driving some sell-off uh, or fear-mongering among the investors, right? But in terms of like her incentives, do we know? Do we know her? No, we don't know. Like, do we know if she holds any crypto assets? Is she incentivized to sell us off? We don't know either. But, you know, that's more of a speculation, if you may, right? So that's reason number one. Reason number two is more of a correlation effect from the China uh, or the Hong Kong stock market side, right? So with respect to investors' fear and contagion, sweeping financial markets from the troubled China property market. So the Hong Kong equity market saw a big sell-off uh, during the Asia trading session on Monday, so technically yesterday, because they're basically one day ahead. The benchmark Hong Kong Hansen Index plunged 4% with embattled developer China Evergrade Group on the brink of default. So with that, drives some correlation effects driving the across the whole equity market, but also with some correlation effects to the crypto market as well. Another one would be the FOMC meeting, you know, with the foreshadow of the, you know, obviously the inflationary pressure that we might be hearing, the quantitative easing or the tapering plan that the Fed will be, you know, progressively uh, cultivating going forward. And obviously with the Fed uh, and the SEC collectively, on the initiatives on the crypto assets, um, compliance and regulatory infrastructure that we'll be hearing going forward. So how, what is gonna, the meeting going to be, um, which needle is it going to be pointing going forward? We frankly don't know, but um, with the actions that we've been seeing so far, you know, Gary Jansler, um, Janet Yelling, Jerome Powell, uh, Don Beyer with his 57 pages of crypto bills, the revisions of the infrastructure bills, all of these um, catalysts can obviously, you know, drive some fear mongering among investors. And also with respect to the recent um, research that has came out from JP Morgan, price, you know, with the econo economist or the market strategist, uh, Nicola, he you know, with his price prediction of $1,500 for Ethereum going forward, which obviously with that, you know, as a reputable bank and, and someone that's relatively respected on Wall Street, with his, um, you know, quote, $1,500 can definitely drive some sell off across the board, right? Just like for his institutional clients uh, on that side of the spectrum, but obviously with some influential power over other investors as well. Another one would be the COVID case uh, because of Delta variants remains, you know, in the January level, you know, despite the colder weather that's cultivating in North America, you know, New York is starting to get more cool now. Like I am, uh, I was biking yesterday and there were some chills here and there, but for me, I like to have that type of weather, but definitely, you know, as the weather gets colder, it seems like you know, despite the cooler weather, the COVID variance news is still cultivating, so something we have to be mindful of, right? 
It seems like I've named like a lot of reasons so far, <laughs> more than five. I think I've named six so far. But another last reason is really just a historical trends. So September has always been, um, you know, not the best month in 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 the whole twelve months in a year, right? And it's averaging like a zero point four percent decline. Um, if you look at the stock traders almanac, right? So, and you know, this is going to endure some selling pressure in September. But it should pick back up in the later half of the month based on historical trends. So something we just have to endure a little bit for the meantime. Nothing really big worry, right? So like I want to make sure that you guys are not panicking and not making rational decisions. So that's um, more on the macro side. But let's talk about some micro news. Um, some news, uh, one coming from Fortune magazine about two hours ago, talk about fortunes <laughs> themselves. Donates profit from the NFT sales to journalism organizations. So this is their uh, contributions, but also a stamp of approval from Fortune on their belief in the NFT commercializations, which you know obviously have some pseudo affectation towards Ethereum. So that's great. So let's go to a technical analysis now. Ta sorry for talking so much about the news um, and the macro factors. Uh, and you know, hopefully this time is not too early for you guys. Seven forty. I typically post like around nine or ten because of my early meetings. Uh, but I want to make sure that you guys are well informed uh, before you you head on to your days, right? Hopefully this is helpful. What we're talking about so far. So it seems like we broke the three thousand one hundred fifty. We are closely testing the three thousand dollars level. So I think in terms of like to buy, um, I think the level is coming soon. I think it's a great level to start dollar cost averaging at right now. Knowing the fact that we are on the scale of 39.46 out of 70. However, MACD is still, you know, showing some bearish pressure. We are forming a negative apex curvature downward. Um, and this is not a good sign because we're forming a head and shoulder, uh, which is not, not a good sign, right? And I said that we will be testing the 3000s. And I think we are almost there. So I think buying at the 3000 just to start incurring risk would not be a bad idea. And ideally for me, right, 2750, 2450 would be the level I'll be buying it. And I think the likelihood of heading to 2750 is very likely now. I know we were... Um, questioning, oh, is this going to be the case? It seems like we are still sustaining a rally. But if we believe in the cheat sheet, which we keep going back to, we are in the anxiety denial stage. I think we are slowly heading to the panic stage now. The panic stage would be, you know, hopefully not, but the $1,500 that we'll be heading down to. But I think based on the chart that we're seeing right now, that will be unlikely because like for us to hit all the way back here, you know, you, you need to see a pump again first and then come back down because like but if we go straight all the way down to the 1500 let's say right it will be impossible in the near term because the chart just it wouldn't you need to basically go to a negative zone for RSI which never happens also the MACD needs to drill all the way down below which doesn't make any sense either so it needs to go through oscillation right so maybe go down oscillate for a long time for a while maybe a couple weeks and then continue to sell off from there so that's something that we have to be mindful of uh it seems like the jp morgan analyst guy nicola he's confirming that we are within this stage of the market cycle at the moment right now but the market cycle should endure just um you know maybe for a couple of months and then we should continue back up to the rally that we'll be experiencing going forward so next year by september we should technically be coming back into continuing the bullish momentum that we saw earlier right um and then continue from there and hopefully hit ten thousand dollars by next year september from there based on the corporate adoption and the burn rates that we've been experiencing so far right and respect to price target, 3,000, 2,700, 2,450. It seems like 3,000 is approaching. So that's not a bad level to start dollar cost averaging at, right? If you really want to buy. Um, but know that, you know, we do have more negative catalysts coming. Or positive or negative, we don't know. It's binary. But if you're buying now, it's still a good move, right? It's a logical one. That whole long term, 9,800 in the next 12 months per hour. This is discussions earlier, 3.3 .3 times your money from here. So hopefully this is helpful. This is my updates on Monday. Uh, really appreciate you for dropping by. Uh, really love you know the support and the comments and uh, just 
just your insight collectively. I think we are all working together on building wealth and financial success going forward. I really appreciate your friendship, most importantly. It's been just a, a wonderful experience. Uh, this was this used to be a hobby for me, but it seems like this is uh, slowly becoming my daily cadence. And I really enjoy the friendship that I've been cultivating here so far. And you just believing in me for subscribing to me um, in, in, in my channel and, and my work. So I really appreciate you. Uh, let's head on to this uh, rest of the week. Uh, we do have a wild week coming up. But I really appreciate you and stay tuned for us to come up. Take care.